December 28th, 1978. We're losing an engine. United Airlines Flight 173 is less than 22 miles from Portland International Airport. The plane's engines are flaming out one after another. With two engines gone, the autopilot can no longer fly the plane. McGrew must get the crippled DC-8 to the airport himself. The engineer struggles to keep the last two engines running. It was a pretty long adventure. We just lost one and two. Flight 173 has now lost all four engines. With no engines running, backup batteries now provide power to only critical instruments. I was relieved to go to get Sunday. Luckily, Robin and Firefly are also safe. The 100-ton aircraft is losing more than 3,000 feet of altitude a minute. At this rate, they will be lucky to stay airborne for as long as 90 seconds. Tomorrow, Robin's inviting me to a concert. Now, Captain McBroom makes a horrifying calculation. I can't make it. The airport is too far away. Okay, declare May Day. Portland Tower, United 173, heavy May Day. He was declared May Day, and then in a very, what seemed to me like a, a calm, matter-of-fact voice, I could hear the pilot. The engines are flaming out, we're going down. We're not gonna be able to make it to the airport. We lost power, we're going down. Emergency services are told what's happening. Flight 173 is flamed out, they're going down. The DC-8 is coming down over a densely populated suburb. Suddenly, Captain McBroom sees what he's been looking for. A dark area up ahead. It looks like an empty field. The place that you want to put it is where there, there's mm. minimum buildings, uh, the most open area possible, because the 200,000 pounds plus jet arriving at 140 <laughs> knots, which is 160 plus miles an hour, it's going to do a lot of damage to the things on the ground. Putting the plane on this narrow strip of land is McBroom's best bet. But as he gets closer, he realizes it isn't an open field. I can't make it. It's a heavily wooded suburb, and he's headed straight for it. Uh, now I can take it easy. So exhausting. If they're woods and that's all you have, then you're going to have to deal with it. The tops of trees are pretty soft. As you settle into the trees, they get progressively less soft. They're going to do a lot of damage. McBroom doesn't give up. He actually tries to steer the plane between the trees. Right? I'm pretty tired too. The passengers still assume that they're about to touch down on a runway. We clipped the top of a few trees, and that felt like we were making the initial landing at the airport. So my first sense was, you know, hooray, we're there. And then all hell broke loose. Huh? Acheron, why are you here? Uh, didn't you say you wouldn't leave? I didn't say forever, so I can visit you anytime. I saw the bright flash out there and, uh, and knew he had gone down. Oh, well, that makes sense. The plane carves a 1,600-foot-long path through the trees. Incredibly, the DC-8 has crash-landed in the middle of a major American city without injuring a single person on the ground. Most of the 189 passengers and crew are alive, including Captain Albert McBroom. 